Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the playoffs of the 2015 season. We are in the round of eight. And boy do we have a good game for you today. Oh, this is going to be a great series. Highly anticipated here. And it is going to be between, on the blue side of your screen, or small well, spawning on the blue side, <laughs> on the left side of your screen, uh, it will be Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Of course, a uh, lovely company that allows you to buy things online, like this beautiful mic, which I'm speaking through right now. And they are playing for the charity Child's Play. Child's Play brings children in domestic violence shelter, shelters uh, and hospitals the joy of gaming to try and help them reconnect with their childhood, stay in a positive mindset here, uh, and really reconnect with being a kid and not... You know, I mean, sitting in a hospital after a traumatic experience like that or in uh, some sort of domestic abuse center, it's a pretty scarring experience as a kid, so uh, trying to help them reconnect with their childhood, get back in touch with just being able to enjoy their life, be a kid again, that's great. Fantastic charity there, and they are, of course, playing against, on the red side, Workday. Workday is a software vendor for on-demand financial management and human capital management. And they are playing for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Make-A-Wish grants the wish of a child uh, diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition in the United States on average every 38 minutes. That is insane to me. I had no idea until uh, casting for this league that Make-A-Wish actually had such a high rate of wish granting. Uh, and again, you know, it's a fantastic charity that uh, brings hope back to these kids. And, you know, if you... Uh, it's it's a bit cliche at this point, but if you lose hope on yourself getting better, uh, you know it seems like the odds are that you actually won't get better. So bringing those kids a lot of hope, actually getting them reconnected with their their uh, inner child again, enjoying life, that helps change so much of their perspective for the better. And you know it's a fantastic cause there. But without any further ado, let us get right into this pick fan phase here. Of course. The first man we are seeing coming out from the red side is going to be that Sejuani. Iron Sheep, during the round of 16, absolutely insane on Sejuani. I will be utterly shocked if Sejuani is not a 100% ban rate for this workday team here. Uh, they are, of course, also in addition to that, going to ban the Callista and Jinx. Of course, the uh, ADC for this blue side uh, for Amazon Hamzon here has shown them very strong. Of course, a lot of that has been put into uh, getting started through the Sejuani, but certainly not dependent on that. We've seen, uh, as we see the Lucian locked in here for him, uh, you know, we've seen this ADC perform very strongly, uh, you know, on a very wide variety of champions. You know, personally, uh, from my research, it seems like the Callista, Jinx, and Sivir are sort of the top three for this ADC, but uh, just before we were getting into this game, there was some practicing going on on Illusion, so uh, it's definitely not a champion that uh, is unfamiliar to this AD carry here for the blue side. And you know, we very consistently see the blue side ADC perform throughout these uh, games we've had in this tournament here. And goodness gracious, okay, no. For a second there, I believe that I was still on this screen here. <laughs> Wanted to make sure you guys could actually see what was going on in the pick fan phase here very quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, we see uh, uh, the So Much For Us right here line from the Amazon, Amazon team. When discussing with them uh, earlier in the game, or earlier this in the week, uh, what the strategy for this game was, uh, it was simply said, uh, get Sejuani, win game. That was the <laughs> plan for this Amazon, Amazon team, of course. Uh, Workday doing their proper, their due diligence in scouting that. Not gonna even uh, feign that that's not a possibility here, so I'm gonna ban Sejuani immediately. Um, we're looking over to the bans for this uh, Amazon, Amazon team here. We, of course, see the Vi band coming out, the uh, LeBlanc band coming out, and the Sivir band coming out. Uh, LeBlanc, of course, a very strong champion, and now always very strong. If you get somebody who's capable uh, on that first, has those mechanics down, she's always going to be a threat. Uh, Vi, a very strong choice currently as well, in my opinion. I think she has a lot of flexibility, 
and certainly a uh, jungler that uh, is very familiar to the Sword Today team here, but they uh, are going to opt to go with the Gragas uh, for that jungle instead, seeing that the Vi is banned out here along with the Sejuani, of course. Um, Gragas, strong as well, brings a lot of utility. The Fat Man, of course, gets very tanky uh, as the game goes on here. We're going to see, of course, I uh, feel, feel like I'm like <laughs> four drafts behind already. But uh, Caitlyn, of course, was the response picked up in response to the solution. Uh, the Lucian Caitlyn lane is going to be uh, a very interesting one to say at least. Of course, Lucian does have a, uh, a lot of mobility here, but there's not too much he needs to be dodging in and out of here. Though if that thrush does get picked up, yeah, it's going to be uh, immediately <laughs> uh, correction for me on needing to dodge in and out of things here. And yeah, that will be the thrush locked in for this workday team here along with the Ari. So, of course, Lucian going to be needing to uh, really dodge out those Thresh Hooks here. Janna going to be very helpful here as soon as, even if a Thresh Hook does land, can just start up that Twister immediately, knock that Thresh up in transit, keep that Caitlyn zoned away. A little extra shield on Lucian never hurt anybody, and then all of a sudden the trade didn't work out too badly for you. Suddenly, a little bit more in your favor. And we do see, of course, uh, the Scion has been locked in uh, for this Amazon Amazon team here. Uh, Scientifically, we see in the top lane, though he's not unfamiliar uh, to the jungle himself, I will be expecting to see a uh, jungler pick up here, but we might see that Scion coming out in the jungle. It would be an interesting pick here. Of course, Scion can get insanely tanky as well, but it uh, looks like the Maokai hover, it looks like we will be seeing that Scion in the jungle here. And boy, will we have a treat. It will be very interesting to watch how those Scion ultimates are used here. Uh, whether it's going to be simply uh, from base ults to try and get to a lane, immediately gank that lane from base. Uh, or perhaps going into the river, getting that crab, ulting down the river, showing up in a lane, immediately being able to bring some CC. We shall see exactly how this goes. But uh, that is uh, to not bury the lead here that is going to be the Anivia locked in into this Ari matchup with both mid laners taking a ignite a very volatile lane here I'll be very interested to see how exactly that plays out Anivia um, definitely somebody uh, that Leech is familiar with here in the mid lane uh, perhaps <laughs> second only to his Ari um, though of course there is a lot of uh, flexibility in there the Orion and the Syndra all, all these standard champions familiar of course to Leech, who is very, very capable in that mid lane. And it looks like, yes, we will see that Rumble locked in for the top lane. So that's going to be a Rumble versus Maokai matchup. A little bit of a bruiser fest here in the top lane. Um, I will be interested to see exactly how this Rumble plays it. If it's going to be a little bit more aggressive of a start here for the Rumble. Or if it's going to be something that's a little bit more focused on just farming up, hitting those key item breaks, getting that penetration down, and then preparing for team fights here. You know, there's a lot of possible synergy here on the red side team with this composition. Uh, but a lot of opportunities uh, for some misplay as well. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly how these team fights are played out um, for this workaday team. I think this is going to be a very interesting game one to set the tone for this best of three series uh, because this is not a simple team composition that really smoothly flows from one thing into another. Of course, you have that catch potential with Ari, uh, with Thresh, of course, but exactly how you work that out. Is, I mean, obviously, if you get a Thresh hook into a charm or vice versa, then that's very easy. But if you don't get that sort of perfect setup, how you enable that kind of setup is going to be what really makes this red side shine here. Of course, Gragas can use his ultimate to displace people towards uh, create picks <laughs> from what is a normally well-positioned team. Uh, but that's going to be very key here. If the team does start to play a little bit uh, defensively positioning-wise, to avoid those RE charms, to avoid those Thresh Hooks, there's going to be uh, some sort of uh, need to start off these fights in a way that 
can create picks, and Gragas is the only real way this red side has to do that. So, if Gragas becomes uh, a follow-up CC through anything but a catch, Gragas is not going to do nearly as much um, as he would otherwise. Of course, with that body slam, a little displacement there, a little bit of CC, always going to be useful. But the real uh, opportunity to make that Gragas shine is going to be with those ultimates. And of course, I mean, with the rumble out there, throwing down that equalizer, that's going to offer them a lot of zoning potential here. If you can grog hold somebody out of position and then throw down the equalizer, not even on the team, but across terrain to make sure that there is no way for the rest of the team to catch it, to re-engage with their now caught out ally uh, from the blue side without walking across that rumble equalizer and taking a lot of damage along the way, that's going to be a very brutal <laughs> choice to make here. Um, of course, it will have to be that Lucian, that uh, Janna, that Anivia. If it's going to be the Maokai or the... Excuse me, the Maokai or the Scion, that's not really going to be helpful. Uh, and depending on how this uh, blue side positions during those team fights, during the setup for those team fights, that's going to be very critical here. Um, of course, it's not all from one side, though. On the blue side here, we do have, of course, Maokai, that point-and-click CC coming in with that Twisted Advance, getting the uh, knock up there, the displacement, and then the Scion also able to use that time that they're rooted, that they're displaced, to charge up his knock up. Going to be bringing a lot of follow up CC there, and by that time, Anivia should be able to get within enough range to throw down her ultimate in a very key position. Lucian should be able to, if not dash in aggressively, should be able to walk in and start getting off those piercing lights, getting off those auto attacks. Um, lining up a possible cooling should people start to get low or start to get grouped as well. So it's going to be a very chess-like game here. A lot of times we see compositions that like to just go in and fight and be bloody. There's a lot of catch potential for both sides. And it's all about the team fights. Who catches first? Who uh, dives in first? Whether or not there's reactionary disengage, with the, which of course... Both of these sides do have, with that Thresh ultimate, with the Grogs ultimate, those can be used to disengage just as much as Janna can be used uh, to disengage, as she is, of course, the queen of disengagement. <laughs> but we will have to wait and see exactly how these team fights play out, because that's going to be the critical, uh, the critical thing tipping this battle, in my view, is going to be how these team fights react. I don't see uh, any lanes that are going to be too far out of reach for either side here, though we might see. Uh, a possible lane swap situation uh, if there's a little concern about the Caitlyn creating a lot of poke onto that Lucian, outranging him, of course, um, <laughs> as Caitlyn's are wont to do. Um, we'll see if there's an early invade from either side here to get some positional wards down, though. We might just see standard lanes here as well. I wouldn't uh, be too shocked to see that. To We're going to see all five charging straight down the mid lane here. Very interesting play. They're actually not going to be spotted out here, and it's going to be Anivia. Oh, beautiful stun there, though. Prevents the Thresh from getting any abilities out there. And now they are in a position where it's 4v5 here. And they're going to choose to disengage and back away there. Just throw down some wards on the red. Beautiful play there by Anivia. Uh, instantly leveling that ability to get that stun off there. And of course, with those wards already thrown down at the line of scrimmage area, thanks to Nivia doing that scouting there, we're going to be able to see the rest of the team disengaging back onto their side of the jungle. They're going to know where those wards are likely placed in their jungle. Possibly consider using those wards to juke out a possible lane swap uh, scenario here and feign that they're sending their ADCs top. Should they so choose, but it looks like they're going to opt not to do that. No, Scion actually going to back here get that, uh, I believe he backed at least. Well, you know, let me, let me, indulge me for one moment, ladies and gentlemen, as I go back. Scion going back here to base after this start, going to, uh, actually forgot his trinket. I see what happened here, so... Uh, perhaps actually strategically as well, not picking up a trinket there in case there was an invade, knowing that their side wasn't going to invade, uh, left that trinket slot open, so as soon as he went back here, he could just pick up a trinket 
uh, sweeping lens if he needed one. And wow, you know, if that if that is intentional, I am very impressed with that play there from Sion. What a uh, genius move there to allow himself a little extra flexibility there. Looks like it's going to be bottom side start here for both these junglers. Of course, getting those stronger leashes from those bot lanes. And both the laners are going to make it to lane just fine here. Going to make it for that first CS, of course. Actually, Kaelin does end up just barely missing that there. Fortunately, Crush, even with the Relic Shield, not going to be able to pick up that first CS, but a single CS shouldn't make that much difference. Another great Anivia shot there, landing those stuns. I'm uh, already quite impressed with this Anivia. If she's going to be able to continue to land those stuns. Uh, to be fair, that was, of course, a little bit point blank there, but uh, should she be able to do that, that's going to be a very strong Anivia, of course. Landing that CC as well as that uh, damage is what makes Anivia so strong here. Crush getting a play a little bit towards the Kaelin, though that might have been a mistake. Actually, Kaelin going so low, forced to pop the heal. Very <laughs> strong fights here, breaking out right as the level 2s come out. Now Kaelin is thrash hitting level 2. Getting a little good poke there onto that Janna, of course. That shield blocking out some of the damage there. But she's going to... Be able to munch down some of those biscuits and be just fine. You see, Blue Side here in the ball lane continuing to try and shove that uh, minion wave into the turret here, do as much uh, denial as possible. They're actually not going to make it. That next wave going to be getting there in time to give this red side a little bit more slack here. Looks like Sion might be looking towards this mid lane here for an early gank. Well, perhaps not so much early as the first gank in the game, and that's a good wall from Anivia. Does uh, slow that pathing a little bit here, but that's going to be the flash, actually. Coming out, respecting that knockup potential from this Sion here. And that's going to be a flash for free in the mid lane here, just for a little time from the jungler. That's definitely going to inspire some confidence in this interview here. And what thus far was a very even matchup, though. Thresh stepping very far forward here, trying to zone them out of some CS here in the bottom lane. It looks like uh, going to be able to somewhat successfully do so here as the Rumble getting very aggressive onto this Maokai here with the Gragas coming in. It's a lot of damage, but the Twisted Advance actually going to get out right before the. Uh, uh, belly <laughs> of that fat man comes in and that will be Ari. yes with that last ability that's gonna be the Ari going down for first blood over to the Anivia here another return gank of course as soon as that flash was down Sion was uh, very confident that no no it's time for me to come back here to this mid lane very soon here I'm actually looking to make a play in the bottom lane but gonna just be zoning them away here not doing too much Aside from that, we'll clear out a pink ward for his trouble, though. Excuse me, a green ward in the tri bush for his trouble. But yeah, first blood onto that Anivia. I cannot stress how critical that is. Anivia, of course, wants to, uh, really needs that early gold to get herself through what is a usual power trough uh, build that ha comes out here. And wow, look at that damage already coming out of Anivia here, just with that single kill. Uh, and that extra time in lane, already out damaging Ari so much here. The extra Doran's ring, not making too much of a, of a difference for her at this point. As Janna trocking that spell peaks as much as she can here. And that will be a good tornado to stop the engagement here. Unfortunately, the Thresh Hook goes wide. They're actually going to chase this Thresh, but here's the Fat Man unsuspecting. Plus this blue side, that will be the flash from Janna. A very patient gank there, sitting in that uh, uh, top brush on the bot lane for quite a while here. Very studious, very good waiting there. Took plenty of time there, waited for the Lucian to come through, chase that Thresh, once exhausted, knowing he doesn't have that return damage potential. He's gonna be able to uh, out-trade and force that Flash onto the Janet, who was a little bit too far forward there, and that's 
Thresh are going over the Lucian shoulder there. Unfortunate for this red side here. This blue side does have to be careful as they are both quite low here. Janna does of course have those biscuits so she'll probably be just fine if she starts to get into a little bit of a, a messy situation here. It's a good tornado from Janna to prevent any possible uh, hooks coming out of Thresh there to try and capitalize on that Caitlyn trap. So now uh, the tables have certainly turned here in this bottom lane as uh, the red side is now shoving into that turret as much as possible here. And that is a good hook onto Janna with the flay as well. That's going to be a lot of the damage blocked out with that shield though. Luckily for Janna coming up there just in time to block that crit damage from the Caitlyn. In the top lane here we see of course the com first components of that Leandre's item coming out here for Rumble. Starting to get rolling up towards that penetration here. You see him spamming out those abilities as well. Starting to build up that rage, but here's actually going very aggressive. This is that Lucian, but he is hooked by the Thrush, but the heal will come out and that will be enough to give him a little extra life there. But hold that thought because it, right over here, oh, the Nivea wall is actually jumped over by the Fat Man. And that's a great Nivea ultimate to get a lot of damage down. And the Egg will be respawning in time here. I do believe she should get out of this lot, but that's a great equalizer. Actually, a little bit to the side here, but does force a lot of damage onto these champions. And that will result in a double kill for this Rumble. Beautiful teleport there. Knowing he had that equalizer up. Threw it a little bit more aggressively to prevent any uh, turns here. But does get that reward for it with the double kill. And they're going to be chasing down this tree. They're going to try and burn him down. Not going to be able to do so, unfortunately. Uh, but they will force everyone back. And that is overall a two for nothing, I believe, in that fight. I could be wrong there. I think there might have actually been a kill going back over to the blue side as well. Of course, starting that off with the Janna, depending on how uh, long you consider that extended fight there. The bottom lane was a little bit isolated in the start of that, but of course overall, uh, during that full action, a uh, one for two in favor of this red side here. You see Janna cleaning up some pink points here, getting even more farm onto herself in addition to that kill. Not enough, she wants kills on pink boards now, oh yes. <laughs> As Caitlyn now with that BF sword is going to have no trouble farming under that turret anymore. So she'll be just fine here. This Thresh even going to use that relic to charge to pick up the cannon for her. And now Nivea at that phase in the game where she can shove this out here. Did uh, opt to go for the boots of mobility here to get in good positioning uh, for those ultimates. Actually land those out. Throw up that wall and a very good zoning potential here, and that's a uh, very strong choice there. Actually, as we see, Lucian going aggressive, dashing back into this. Good sidestep on the hook, though. Not going to be punished for it, because he does get a favorable trade there. Yeah, so as I was saying, Anivia, uh, with that Catalyst build, going to have a little bit more uh, sustainability here. Probably opting to go for that over the blasting one, not just for the sustain, but of course during that last fight did have her egg pop. So uh, Lucian again dashing in, very aggressive here. After the cooldowns are up for the red side, definitely the right choice there. But uh, gonna be making a largely even trade here. So we see action all over the map right now. Lucian quite low, but he does have that boost advantage. So. He's able to dive in and out of this situation a little bit quicker. He'll have a little bit extra mobility. Dodge out those skill shots a little bit, but unfortunately they are going to be zoned out here. That is Sion hanging out in the bottom lane, perhaps waiting for an opportunity to charge up. It seems like he is lingering, but uh, as all this is happening, Maokai getting very low actually flashes after the rumble turns back. Oh no, very unfortunate there for the top lane Maokai here, giving up that uh, flash essentially for free here, but a strong respect of the rumble damage. Not wanting to risk that uh, ultimate from the equalizer, but there it is. Well, after waiting for so long, he does ult in, but the Thresh Lantern is gonna be enough to keep her alive here. Thresh 
has to be careful himself, is going to uh, flash back in for the box, and that's a lot of damage, but immediately stunned up cc for so long was Ari that as soon as she dove back in, she instantly regretted here. The Fat Man is going to take a lot of damage on the edge of that Nivea wall, and that will be him going down the Thresh Lantern. Not going to be enough there. CC'd a little bit too long. Those Thresh Lanterns have been on point. But unfortunately, that won't be enough to get this sign or this uh, Gragas out alive, and he will be going down as well. Overall, a two for one in favor of the blue side here. It looks like that might be the first dragon of the game as well. Going over to the blue side, Malkai gonna telegraph that a little bit, leaving the mid lane, but of course not gonna be able to get there in time to contest are the red side. And that will be the first dragon of the game, uncontested, going over to this Amazon Amazon team here. Already at a 1k gold lead here. Starting to get a significant advantage here as it's building. This is going to be a critical time, of course, for the red side if they can uh, get through this phase where they do have a bit of a gold disparity, particularly focus on Anivia. Try and get that Anivia knocked out very quickly here as long, along with the Lucian, of course. Lucian certainly to be respected here, but Thresh going very deep there for the pink ward. Might regret it here. Ari is in tow there. She does miss the charm, though, so that's going to be uh, a safe blue side who gets out of there scot-free. The Thresh immediately going to have to back after clearing out that pink ward. That was a lot of damage coming out on him. We see Rumble with those uh, nearly heat sinking missiles here, reminding us, of course, of the good of the It is Rumble overheating, so he does not have those passive abilities up right now. He's tanking up that turret a little bit for his team right now. That's a lot of damage coming out onto Ari, who does have to spirit rush away. She's solo, has to be careful here. But Sion does have his ultimate available, but she's going to Spirit Rush right into the back here. And uh, sit between those turrets and go back and be just fine here. But with that Anivia now, able to shove those waves in very quickly. That's going to be a lot of pressure on this mid lane. That will pull the rest of this team here. But that's a beautiful hook from the Thresh. Going to force out the ultimate. And she does step forward just enough to make that Gragas knock her to safety. And that is exactly what we were talking about. Beautiful Anivia wall there. Hold that thought, actually, because that was a fantastic Anivia wall to stop any follow-up there to try and prolong that engagement. Great placement on that wall for the zoning. And that is exactly what we were talking about during the champ select phase, of course. Not just the possibility of uh, Gragas uh, ulting somebody to safety, which is, of course, always a huge risk when you pick that champion, but the... Uh, just overall use of that ultimate for repositioning. How acute uh, are these uh, capabilities on the Gragas for this workday team here? That's going to be absolutely critical for their fights. And this Maokai caught out a little bit too strong here. Uh, is this red side a lot of damage? He's going to try and turn on the rumble, but he will not be able to. Of course, Ari, with that Q and with that charm, going to be forcing him to go in and fight. And that looks like it's going to be the same case for Lucian here, as he will be going down to the 2v1 with Kaylin and Thresh returning to that bottom lane. And an unanswered 2 for nothing here. They will try and take the mid lane turret for their troubles, and they will be able to do so. First turret of the game for this uh, blue side. Definitely a needed uh, amount of global gold here. As we see, uh, the now 1k gold lead has shifted over to the red side here. And it looks like they will be able to pick up this turret as well. The Scion, with that ultimate available, is right here. And that Janet shield is going to block out a lot of damage. I'm not sure if it will be enough, though. That is a hook on the or onto the uh, Scion. Going to opt to not use that ultimate very low on mana. Wouldn't be able to bring too much follow-up CC to that. With the looming thread, that is going to force the back here. And for now, that bot lane outer turret will be defended. So hold that thought, because we do see Ari and uh, Rumble cruising towards that bottom lane. We're going to think better of it after they realize they were spotted out by that pink ward. Oh, 
And that turret's so low right now, just very quickly here. Six hit points after all those minions were hitting it. That Janus Shield, absolute hero here, saving a little bit of time for this blue side here. Any backs that happen between now and when they go blow on that turret are going to be absolutely critical. The Janus Shield's going to preserve that turret still, as Anivia is going to be able to clean out that pink board here. And that will be Caitlyn going back without that extra gold. Thrush trying to catch Anivia with a hook there. Unfortunately, not able to do so with the Ari in tow. With the charm available, that would have been a very dead Anivia. Would she have been caught there? It looks like we're going to see uh, Red Buff handed over to the Lucian here. As actually stepping into that stun is actually going to force the Spirit Rush out of Ari. Absolutely needed to do so, otherwise she would have been falling victim to a possible Anivia wall coming up. Sticking her in that ultimate longer than she wanted to be. But a beautiful leading shot there from Anivia. Seeing that uh, Ari, of course, not wanting to go deeper towards the blue side turret. Once she realized that uh, Anivia was there. Actually, hold that thought because there's a lot of damage coming out from that Lucian. Caitlyn's so low already. And that will be turned going down. Sion flashes in to land the Twisted Advance. Forces the return flash from that Caitlyn. But with the CC here, that's going to be uh, Thrush and Caitlyn. Locked down through that engagement, and that will be two for nothing right here as the turret fell as well. And here comes a teleport from Maokai to prevent uh, Rumble from answering with a turret in the top lane here. So an unanswered two free kills essentially in this bottom lane here. Caitlyn perhaps trying to defend that outer turret a little bit too hard at this point in the game, and there are that many members in this bottom lane. And now we see, of course, the pings coming out. On that dragon, Gragas looking to try and prevent anything from happening here. Maybe trying to throw out that stun. Doing as much zoning as possible. And that, actually, was that... No, that was not... I, for a moment there, I thought that already might have picked up that Skull Crab. But no, that will be the Skull Crab going over to the blue side here in Maokai. Looking to chase this Rumble. Beautiful Olivia wall, but that is going to be the flash from Rumble. Great reaction time on Rumble to see that Anivia wall coming out, realize what had happened, no hesitation, burn that flash immediately, that absolutely the right call there. And that lack of hesitation definitely going to save uh, his life, keep him available for this team fight, of course, with that Leandre's completed now, with those Sorcerer shoes completed, our near true damage is going to be coming out. During this team fight, very little magic resistance built at this point for the blue side. So all that ten gonna be doing a lot of work here. That is a lot of damage to start this off. Ari, great position there. That's a very good rumble ultimate as well. Zoning people off, forcing them to walk out of that for a very extended period of time. That's gonna be how the Maokai goes down though. Gragas has gone down as well. That is a smiteless red side here. Caitlyn throwing out the ace in the hole. Gonna be blocked out there, I do believe. And Thrush with the flash hook, unfortunately not able to connect. And now that will be the red side looking to pick up this dragon. Or perhaps even bait it out. Of course, as they do not have the smite available, this is a very risky play here. Of course, that's crying order coming out. They will know that it has been started off here. Pulling out a little bit, trying to lay it a little bit here. As the mid laner and top lane is trying to run duty, but there's the calling, and no, Kaylin, very serious, waiting for in between those calling shots to pick it up. And there's a beautiful Gragas ultimate, gonna be costing Anivia her life there. Now, that is the kind of Gragas ultimates we need to see there, punishing people, actually dashing right into the charm. That's a lot of damage on Lucian, but the ultimate from Sion. Catching out the two squishies, and all of a sudden, this became a two for one in favor of the blue side. Unfortunately, after taking that Anivia, thinking they could go a little bit deeper, pick up even more, perhaps overextending a little bit, pressing their luck, and they are going to be punished for it. Is this workday team, though? That was a very close engagement. Just a few minor positioning changes could have spelled an entirely different team fight there, but that will be a mid lane inner turret being picked up 
by the Amazon team. Oh, that as well. So the dragon uh, has been evened up here, one for one, uh, for both these teams. And we do see the Righteous Glory has been completed for Sion. We'll be able to keep up with those uh, champions, get onto them, stay onto them, uh, bring his team with them, actually land all of his CC, be able to get in a good enough position to charge up that CC for a very long time here. And we do see him, of course, delaying those Mercury treads a little while longer here. Not very concerned with the Ari, perhaps, but uh, might be pushing in his luck there against the Rumble, who is 3-0 and 2 right now. That is a lot of damage going to be coming out from the Rumble. Of course, Ari, not something you can uh, neglect here. And there's Hero Thrush, just going to step forward. And that's actually the hook onto the minion, though. And that teleport will be coming out for Rumble to make sure... Uh, nothing goes insane down here, but actually Rumble gonna be left to fend for himself here. There were only uh, three members, including himself, so gonna give his life up for the team there. Go down for the first kill on him in this game. And unfortunately for the red side, that is the shutdown gold coming from that kill on to Rumble. Perhaps I uh, should have given up somebody uh, like the Thresh instead, who does uh, have two deaths already, prevent a little bit of that shutdown gold from coming out, fueling the coffers of this blue side team a little bit less, but there's going to be the Sion ultimate coming out. It's not going to accomplish too much, but we'll zone them away to make sure that inner turret in the bottom lane for the red side goes down, and now that is five to three turrets. All but one of the inner turrets gone down at this point, Whereas every inner turret remains for this blue side. Seeing the disgusting amounts of damage already just with that raw of ages completed here and the uh, chalice as well. Or the Athenes of Holy Grail as it were. Um, almost fully stacked for Rod of Ages right now so once Anivia goes back one more time and picks up uh, a little bit more damage here as we do see she's almost got enough for a needlessly large draw. She's going to start to become an enormous damage threat. You see Lucian going to be picking up that red buff for himself again. As, uh, that's all five members here in this mid lane. Going to try and force uh, the issue here. Create an opportunity, but that is Scion. You definitely don't want to be fighting him. They do chunk out quite a bit of his health given how tanky Sion already is, but going to be largely inconsequential right now. Of course, looking at the Maokai as well, we do see that Raw is nearly fully stacked for him as well. And that's going to be the Spirit Rush forced out again. Great Anivia wall there. Zoning quite a bit, and Thresh actually so low, that's going to be the Colleen coming out. Not going to be able to land the last few hits they needed onto that Thresh. But that will be a lot of pressure created. Ari already so low as well. And the red buff from is going to be a lot here, and they actually, she will go down. And that ace in the hole, going to have a lot of the damage blocked out, and there's the Anivia wall. Combined with the tornado from Jan, they're going to be able to prevent any follow-up here. Rumble really looking to try and get in there, but simply too far away. Janna just too speedy, as per usual, with Janna. An interesting choice as well on the Janna, opting to go for those cooldown boots with the uh, captain enchantment here. Uh, the Lucidity boots, of course. A uh, very good choice on the jam to make sure that she can span out those abilities as much as possible, provide as much utility for her team as she can here, but uh, we'll see if there's going to be any cost to doing so here. Uh, no longer able to uh, get into as well of a position to use that utility, but if she can... She's feeling confident right now as a 1, 2, and 9 gen. I certainly do not blame her.
<laughs> and going for those cooldown boots just to be able to impact even more frequently. Good prediction there on the charm, which you're going to be able to get out of that order just fine. And as the dragon started off, they will clear out the wards. Red side knows this is going on, so they're going to actually look to try and trade the Baron here. Very cheeky play, and of course, there are no wards on that Baron. They do know that something happened on this red side, and Rumble uh, is trying to zone away as best as he can. They're actually going to leave it, the Baron healing up. Not going to be uh, completed there, but that is a beautiful Rumble ultimate. Pops the egg, the uh, Nivea going to be actually protected by that egg, going to be just fine here. And that will be the Rumble going down. So I'm looking to fight here. Will land the CC and now chain CC preventing the Thresh Lantern from saving that Caitlyn, unfortunately, for the red side. Now a two for nothing. Trying to rush that Baron down. Unfortunately, Baron going down much slower than Dragon does. Gave plenty of time for this boost head to come right over after finishing that Dragon Rumble. Doing his best to try and zone them off. Try and prevent them from getting there as quickly as possible, but... Leaving that Baron... Probably, of course, the right call there, but it's got to feel bad for this blue side, or excuse me, for this red side, as they essentially gave up an uncontested dragon here for just a just a little hope, just a twinkle in the eye at a possible Baron trade, but they were not able to rush down quickly enough. That is some fairly well memory here. The beautiful hook onto that Anivia. Not gonna opt to follow it up though. Thinking better of that. Not gonna let that Lee Syndrome come into the Thrush hooks here. Is that this combo out again though? Great shot with that Anivia. Landing those stuns so consistently here. I mean, to see an Anivia player who can very consistently land those stuns and actually provide a lot of CC for her team using that and the wall. Absolutely very impressive Anivia play, and that's the hook on Illusion. They will be dogging in onto this one. They will get instantly two kills the entire bot lane for this blue side blown up. Gonna be Spirit rushing in. His R and she will get Maokai with the last one, but that's not uh, going to be a clean trade there. She will go down herself, and Caitlyn's so low right now. Gonna be able to EOA. Gonna be able to life steal off that, but that actually is Thrush going down. After sign on, it had that passive up. So overall, a 5 for 2. Hugely in favor of this red side here. Evening up this game quite a bit. And now that's going to be the mid lane. Inner turret going down as well. Unfortunately, no global objectives available aside from these turrets. But certainly that global gold from the turret is going to be doing a lot of work here. As they will try and pick up this red buff as well for the Caitlyn. As she does get in. Once seeing that scrying orb come out, gonna not risk trying to get those cards. Gonna just E over that wall. And yeah, I'll settle for picking up this uh, skull crab. But wow, that was absolutely what this red side needed to get back in the game here. Evening up that score quite a bit now. Only 2.5k gold down at this point. A very uh, minor lead now for the blue side. Those dragons largely even, 2-1 to one in favor of the blue side here, but no critical third dragons coming out for either side yet, keeping this game very even up here. We do see Anivia actually opting to go for a little bit of penetration here, a little bit more tankiness as well, with that Leandris. Rather than going for the raw damage, knowing that there's uh, a lot of uh, focus coming onto her, specifically. Uh, gonna opt for something a little bit more safe here. Still be able to do a lot of raw damage here. You know, looking at the build for the red side with no MR built on any champion at this point. I mean, it's so it's so surprising to see none at all. That Leandres is going to be plenty to make that Anivia do true damage at this point. This is blue side looking to try and get something started here. Rumble taking quite well. It's a huge amount of damage as they go in. That's Spirit Rush. 
not going to be enough. Gonna need the flash as well, but she will make it out with her life. Beautiful Gragas belly flop there. And throwing down that ultimate to prevent anything from happening in the follow-up there. Onto that low R and that will be... Actually, hold that thought as soon as I say that, Anivia gonna land a beautiful shot there onto Ari. I'm so impressed with this Anivia play. Of course, with that pink board available, did see her trajectory, but dashing forward is Lucian. Very confident in those skills there. And that's another Gragas ultimate coming out. And he will not make it away though. The person like gonna pick him up. And very low are this blue side members, but still able to hang out, still able to create a lot of damage here. They're gonna go back on a ward, unfortunately. Uh, Ace in the hole is available on that Lucian. Will be a good guy, you see here. Block that out for the Jana. And she's gonna be able to make it out of there just fine. You know, this uh, 1, 3, and 15 Jana absolutely being a monster this game. And again, as we were speaking about in the champ select phase, uh, even without that Sejuani coming out, once this ADC gets going, absolutely posting huge numbers. Both members of the bot lane are here able to post huge numbers. And now, of course, we're seeing that reflected here with the 7, 3, and 7 Lucian, with the 1, 3, and 15 Jana. Not to discount at all the 6, 2, and 7 in Nivea here. And again, beautiful plays with that CC. Now, we're actually in a reverse situation of earlier. The Dragon went down a little bit faster, though. So this Baron shouldn't be able to be rushed. And they do have a ward on this Baron. They will know that the vision is being cleared out here. You see the pings coming out for this red side. Try and make sure nothing's fishy's going on here. Thresh just going to slam a ward down. Going to know that they backed away. Going to get a little bit more vision there and actually does land the hook on the Malkai. That's the charm as well. Taking a good chunk of damage. About a third of the damage. Oh no, no! Rumble! Going to not be able to flash that wall. That wall just a little bit too far away. And that... Oh, that's so unfortunate for this red side team. You see the damage coming out from the Ari onto that ADC. If only that Rumble had been able to flash the wall. But now that is a 4v5 situation here as the blue side immediately coming back over to this Baron. They are going to start it off here. And wow, that is so critical for this Amazon team. Now with that Rumble equalizer out, I mean there's no opportunity to equalize this situation here. And that is a lot of damage. Onto the Anivia, the egg not popped yet though. And Ari being chased very strongly by that sign. That's a lot of damage, a huge amount of damage onto all these members. The egg now is popped. And here's Rumble coming out here. That's a huge Gragas ultimate. But nobody knocked in a position that synergizes at all with that equalizer. And that's what we're talking about again. Anivia not going to be able to make it out of there. The egg taking too long to get her back in action. So she will go down, and so one for nothing for this red side here. And now they're looking to start off this Baron. So low are these carries. I'm not sure if this is the right decision. They are very vulnerable right now. That's so much damage coming out of this Baron. Already a third of the HP left. That should be the Baron going down before anything can be done about it. And in fact it is going to be able to back away right now. And again, just when we think things are starting to turn for the worst for this Workday team, they somehow find a way to create an engagement, to get into a position and get an objective. And now all of a sudden, they are totally back into this with that Baron, with the Dragon score evened up, only a 3k gold disadvantage for them. Of course, that is not insignificant, but with the... Uh, benefit of the Baron buff currently on them, they might be able to create uh, some objective pressure here and get something to even that up a little bit right now. Of course, the turret's still in favor of Amazon Hamazon on the blue side, as they are uh, only uh, relegated to now their uh, inhibitor turrets on the red side here for workday. Good charm there from the Ari. That is so much damage on the tanky Malkai. 
absolutely insane amounts of damage. Oh my god, I'm so blown away by that. Wow, that is a very impressive amount of DPS there. And that is Lucian going down as well. And that is an easily falling bot lane. This might be the inhibitor turret as well as death timers. Well over 30 seconds at this point in the game. I think that this uh, bot lane uh, inhibitor turret is going to have to be given up as well. Along with the inhibitor. These super uh, 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 bearing up minions rather. Uh, so much damage. I don't think they should push much beyond this inhibitor here. Looking to try and get a possible pick here. But they're actually getting a lot of chain CC onto that Caitlyn. She will go down immediately. Scion double tapping that R for the burst. And that will be Thresh going down as well. And the Workday team overstaying their welcome entirely here. Giving up two kills for nothing. That actually might be more as all of these uh, Amazon Amazon members have respawned. Now three for nothing. Anivia looking to go forward. Does get the wall. And that's going to be Ari going down as well. Four for nothing. Four for overstaying on an inhibitor. That has to be painful for this red side. Just when you thought that they were getting back in the game here. Were creating an opportunity for themselves. Absolutely overstaying their welcome. Paying the price for it. Luckily for them, still a minute left on that dragon respawn timer. So there's not going to be any huge objectives going down. The Fat Man going to be enough to prevent this mid lane from being shoved up too hard. But no, absolutely no reason to have stayed for that, uh, for those kills. I mean, looking for a, a possible kill off of that inhibitor as well. Certainly something you can peek at, but with those death timers coming down to nothing, with those respawns coming in, you have to get out of there while you still have the 3v5 advantage, especially with your low health bars, uh, with your low mana bars. you got to be respectful of the uh, follow-up potential that this Amazon team brings. We've seen time and again this game, they've absolutely been able to punish any minor overextension. And Workday simply not respecting that. Gonna pay the price here. So, you know, they're looking to continue to press on. Four K behind in gold right now. They do have a very good even distribution of their kills, so their item builds are not too far behind on the champions. They need them. The Scion gonna be throwing on the ultimate here, looking to catch that rumble, but not gonna be able to do that with that speed up. That's going to be Rumble to actually force a flash here in the tip of the knockup lands. And there's the Anivia while Rumble throwing out the Desperation Equalizer. Not going to be able to make anything of it. And that will be the dragon available right now in a 4v5. Could be the third dragon of the game for this blue side. And no, going to dash in is Ari actually followed by the Twisted Advance. There's a lot of damage on the Maokai, but here's the Fat Man, not going to be able to save the Ari so close. But the ultimate from Caitlyn, actually blocked out by Janna, taking a lot of damage onto herself. Good guy Janna, going to be taking the brunt of that. As Zogus, with that GA available, not going deep enough into that to save his team there. Well, unfortunately... It is unclear if you would have been able to have you gone deeper anyway. And unfortunately, that's uh, going to be Malkite going down. But for his life, they will get the Caitlyn. And now with that GA pop, that's going to be the CC perfectly timed from the Scion to prevent uh, any possible jumps there. A bit off more than he can chew here as a rumble. Already taken down to half his HP. And wow, absolute massacre from this Amazon team here, destroying the workday in that engagement. And you know, this game now, after that third dragon, critically with that movement speed, now with the uh, all over 7k gold lead, the backs all coming out, these items being picked up, the upgraded trinkets, the uh, nearly full item builds here, the uh, GA coming out for Nivea, on top of the passive egg, which I do believe is still available right now, and yes, in fact, it is.
So Nebu, you're gonna be an absolute menace in this upcoming team fight with that death cap now completed. Gonna be doing a ton of damage. But you know, right now we are at that point in the game where this is as bad as it gets for the red side. If Workday can manage to defend uh, for these next five or so minutes, things are just going to get easier for them at this point in the game. This is about as rough as it gets. And this Baron doesn't go down for the red side. Actually, Rumble way out of position there, trying to be a hero, take out that Lucian. Absolutely unable to do so. Good sidestep there by the Gragas, but wow, that is very unfortunate. Even had the Zonias available, but absolutely nothing to do there when there's a whole team that comes out from beside you there. Of course, the wards were able to spot that out uh, for the red side here. So I'm very, that's a very unfortunate catch there from Hamzon. And again, it shows what we were talking about earlier of uh, any possible chance to punish you, this Amazon Amazon team absolutely capitalizes on. And that is how they've extended their lead so far in this game. There's been many a time. Hold that thought actually because the team fight's looking to break out here. Nivia not going to be able to position that wall in a way that keeps them in range here. Very low is that Lucian, but Caitlyn out of position with that uh, flash from Sion. Beautiful flash to reposition and force that Caitlyn out make her get stuck there and now she's gone down and that's another unanswered kill going over to the amazon amazon team here and now possibly looking to start off that variant there it is it's going to be started off here rumble is available does have an equalizer available but that is a dropping baron so fast the war gonna be spotting this out we'll have to throw it down right now not even gonna try Gonna just back away there. And now, this is as hard as it gets here. With these backs coming out, with these uh, last completions of some critical items here, for some of these members on the Amazon Amazon team. They're going to have so much uh, of a power spike here with that Baron buff as well. Unfortunately, the hero minions in the bot lane not able to take down that inhibitor. And there are no wards available for Rumble to try and go down there. Rumble, of course, not the best to sneak an in heavy either. Anyways, so... Did you see, of course, the blue pots coming out, the red pots coming out, lots of uh, damage coming out. This is the critical moment. Both sides recognizing that this is a do-or-die moment right now for the Workday team, and that's gonna be the Scion ultimate. Will land it onto Caitlyn, and oh no, Caitlyn gonna be absolutely destroyed there. Nothing she can do. Caught out by that Scion ultimate, and now this is gonna be the mid lane in him going down, and the base being cracked open finally for this Amazon Amazon team here. They might be looking for more as well. They press in, Rumble is back and healthy. Does still have that equalizer available, but Ari absolutely annihilated. Still no Zonia's coming out from the Rumble. CC too much there, and that is going to be a Grog's ultimate for a little bit of disengagement to try and protect these turrets here. The Jana heal, gonna be too much to regen them up, and this is an undefendable base right now. Workday trying their best, but just simply unable to. And that will be the first game in this best of three going over to Amazon Amazon here. And wow, a very strong showing. Again, until the mid game, this was a very contested game. Hotly contested between these two teams here. But at the end, I mean, the stats speak for themselves at the end of this game. That 10, 4, and 14 Lucian. That 15, 3, and 10 in Nivea. This game absolutely went insane. Those carries did their job in the Scion. Iron Sheep again. Showing just overall jungler, like... <laughs> there, there is a reason Iron Sheep is the jungler for Amazon Amazon. Let's put it that way. 6, 2, and 19 on Scion with that uh, target ban to force them off of what was supposedly this pocket pit champion for him. 
And wow, I mean, that's looking at the damage totals very quickly as well, because we do want to hop into game two here very quickly. Anivia, 47k damage. Lucian out damaging all the members on the red side team, but Anivia way outpacing Lucian as well. So much damage coming out from that AoE. And now, this is something we've discussed previously when casting this Amazon Hamazon team. It seems like Astronaut Jason, or Agronaut Jason, excuse me, uh, is just somebody you can't ban out. We've seen a number of teams try to do all those uh, bans towards the AD carry of Amazon Hamazon, try and force him off a champion that he's comfortable on, prevent him from going insane, and we have yet to see a team that is able to find a set of bans that accomplishes that task. And it seems like perhaps trying to focus bans elsewhere on people that enable him, perhaps the supports, the junglers, those bans might be more effective and we might see a switch up in the strategy here for game two, especially with the first pick going to be coming out for the uh, red side team in this game for uh, workday here. Now going to be on the blue side in game two. Perhaps they will be looking to use that first pick as a fourth ban to try and uh, snatch away that Sejuani if they leave it available. Something of that nature. But we will see as we are going straight into game two here. Thank you for watching. If you want to see all these videos, stay tuned with the upcoming matches, the schedules. All of those uh, are available from the beautiful website you see on your screen right now, AfterHoursGaming.tv. And of course, feel free to stay tuned to this channel uh, for game two, which will be starting right now.